Yeah, weirdly that Chrysalis. I think I, th I think everyone's looking at Chrysalis and going, "Really? You you, you didn't want to touch the item, which is probably the most disgusting item. Maybe Valve's mm. just like, "Yeah, screw it. We we want to see some more Chrysalis coming out. We want to enable Thompson." The thing is, though, I, even though the item has like a bit of prominence right now, I don't think it's like too too Barney too crazy that mm -hmm. like it needs an instant nerf right it's okay. currently at the position where people are able to build it into uh an item build or can just opt to just have it in their like inventory right but they don't it's not like every item's buying it cre every game right you're not seeing yeah. every single position one every single position to pick it up for that value right so it's mm -hmm. not at the stage of being broken it's at the stage of think of being acceptably bought which I think is a healthy item, right? Like before you'd go for Maelstroms or you'd just go for SMY, yada, 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 right? But now you can potentially go for an earlier Chrysalis to enable that into your build. Again, not all heroes can buy it. So I think I think it's in a nice spot. We don't need to do anything too crazy yet. Okay, okay. I, uh, you know, I'm on board, actually. I yeah. do like seeing new items uh, coming out, which can be built early on. And yeah, I, I don't think it's disgusting, but it does seem quite, no. quite good. Uh, yeah, of course. All right, so let's get into the... this draft. So we've got an Earth Spirit now coming out for a Cyber Legacy and Phantom Lancer coming out from Virtus Pro. Do they have any Phantom Lancer counters on the side of Cyber Legacy? Not really. I mean, the Puck and Earth Spirit can kind of deal with the illusions very early on, but the moment PL starts getting some stats up, it's going to be tricky for them. So they're going to go for the Underlord. Yeah, obviously the, uh, the classic laning phase counter. I think within the game, though, it's not too much of an issue because you're always going to have your mana drained. Sure, mana, uh, Diffusal Blade now does 10 mana less per hit, but whatever, that's still not enough to really care about it. So yeah, Underlord's not really going to have mana in the fights, and Underlord's a very clunky hero, where as soon as you leave laning phase, if you don't have a purpose in the game, and you're reacting a lot, and trying to like catch up to the tempo of the game, it's quite hard to play that hero. Luckily, they help, so I say luckily, they've obviously picked these heroes, so they, it's, it's not luck, but anyway, they've got the Chen, Earth, Spirit, and Puck, which are all quite early game tempo heroes. So they can easily set the game off to enable this Underlord to have presence. Yeah, this guy. Underlord can really, as well, this this is like a do-all or do-nothing hero. Sometimes we see Underlords mm -hmm. kind of just run around the map and die a lot, and sometimes we see them split-pushing lanes, taking towers, and then turning up to fights with like 300 damage and just one-shotting supports, you know? It's it's a real Marmite hero, I find. But yeah, definitely uh, definitely one of my top picks for the offlane right now, I'd say, because uh, every now and again he just comes out and takes you a game. Also, I think we don't really see enough of him in like high-tempo lineups, because I feel like he can really offer a lot to some really... You know, if you, if you get a great lane matchup for an Underlord, Give him a decent support and then just rock up and destroy your lane and then just run around with your cores. You can get so much done, so much pushing power. But yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, I experienced the the pain of playing against an Underlord where I'm so, like I play like a Luna right against Underlord and you don't have any damage in on a Luna already. You have to use your aura to get that damage and then he comes to lane, slaps a point in his aura. It's like oh, okay, I guess I'm not hitting creeps today. So yeah, I can. Fully see the reason for this Underlord pick. It really works well with the initial four heroes. Ooh. The PA pick, though, Ooh. that's very much a support killer. It's going to be Ancient Is Rubik. It will all... Yeah. The but Battle Fury the... for PL as well, right? Yeah, but that is going to be most likely the build. It'll be Battle Fury, Deso, BKB. Yeah. But I think right now, it's you, you're you going to be able to kill the PL, of course, with your Battle Fury later on, but it's simplifying your fights where... This PL, he's going to have a good game overall because, sure, post laning phase, he's, he's going to be able to get away from the Underlord. But in reality, it's like, how does Cyber Legacy get to the backlines, kill the backlines, and then take the continued fight? Sure, of course, you've got your Puck and Earth Spirit, but you need that explosive damage. So that's where PA comes in. You've now got magic damage, obviously, from Puck Earth Spirit. You've got that big burst of physical. You've kind of evened out your draft with like varying damage types, which then allows you to, like, I think. Again, like I said, you need to kill the backlines first and then move on to like the peel or the morphling. You're not going to really be able to kill the, these peels and morphling straight away because they're quite elusive. You don't have a lot of controlled lockdown outside of coil. So, Yep, cut off the yeah. supply lines and then uh, try exactly. and deal with the front lines. That seems to make sense to me. And the final pickup from Virtus Pro is a morphling, which does feel somewhat greedy. I mean, having a PL and a morphling on the same team is um, <laughs> yeah. quite... Yeah, these, these are pretty late game heroes, but Cyber Legacy... Do they have the ability to push back and kind of lay the stomp down on Virtus Pro? I mean, if Pikachu kicks off, then I, I think they can and try and get 
I don't know. I'm kind of thinking that maybe you actually don't go for the Battle Fury on PA anymore. It feels maybe a bit slow and go for something else. But then again, yeah, I think there's two ways Cyber Legacy can take this, right? They can either go for the five heroes, run down lanes, try and just outpace Virtus Pro when they hit their timings. Maybe go for something like a, a Desto into a BKB for the PA, just skip the Battle Fury entirely and try and take the game like that. Or you can run at them as four, keep pressure on the Morphling and the PL because they don't really have a fighting core until that PL gets his Diffusal Blade and then just let your PA farm, 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 get the Battle Fury, keep on farming, get to be the biggest hero on the map and then play it like that. Which one do you think they're more likely to go towards, T? I think it's going to be all about the laning phase is going to be very neutral in terms of underlord pill, very neutral mid lane. Like we saw with more, like no one's morphling the other day. He always pushes out the wave. He always just plays like, okay, you're never going to be able to hit my tower. So I think it's all about how can they take these early tier one towers, close out the map, and then, like you said, with the itemization from PA, you it's like that. Like depending on how the game goes, will then be okay. We can go for maybe an earlier timing, or we can go for that battle fury. I don't think. We're going to see PA choose an item build until the point and we know where like the towers are being dropped or not. If they're struggling okay. to take the towers already, then it'll be a battle fury. If they're easily taking towers and have like a very firm hold on the map, for example, like this, like I drew on the mini map, then you might be seeing like the earlier items. I think the main issue with this morphing PL is it forces you to think about itemizing for the late game because you know, all right, even though they are, they're really greedy heroes, we know VP as a team are going to be able to make those mid-game decisions, those key team fights that are going to prolong the game. And then if we prolong, if they prolong the game long enough, I've got a PA with no way of farming, for example. So I think it's going to put a, a big question mark inside PA's mind on how do I actually itemize this game. Yeah. Okay. So we'll be keeping a very close arm plan to most of this game, and I think it's pretty cut, clean cut for Kuman. You know, it's, it's just. Diffusal was nerfed slightly, but it's still absolutely fine, especially on Illusion heroes. Um, pretty yep. much very, very little change for them. And yeah, I imagine Morphling, no reason for him to really bother with the Lincolns or anything like that this game. So probably just heading straight in for the shotgun build, I would imagine. Uh, that shotgun can be very nice against PA as well, of course, being a uh, evasion high armor target. Any kind of magic damage just cut through before that BKB can be very valuable. So if you're going to hit that ethereal blade timing before the BKB timing on the PA, you're feeling pretty happy about life as we start to shuffle in for the runes here. Chappy going to just fight up into Kuman. Kuman's trying for it. He actually gets it. All right. That is probably going to grab themselves three. Interesting um, setup from uh, Cyber Legacy is they've got the Underlord and PA bottom so that they could one, secure the rune, and two, see if they're trying to skip the waves with the PL against the Underlord. Mm -hmm. And then they see the PL bottom instantly TPing the PA top. Therefore, they have the TP advantage if Virtus Pro was to change their lanes. Or were to change their lanes. Yeah. English, hard language. Don't worry, we'll get there. I just need another 23 years. Kuman, though, is going to be stuck in that matchup versus the Underlord, basically, is the result of that. Yeah. So, uh, unfortunate, buddy, but we'll see how much he can do. Probably like, a decent amount. I mean, matchup. he's got an Earth Spirit, right? Like, Earth Spirit is a pretty garbage lane support, and then you've got an Enchantress on the other side, so. Like, this matchup really isn't bad for the PL. Like, especially when you have the Enchantress. Earth Spirit, like, the Underlord has presence within these lanes. If he has, let's say, like, that range support, that guy who's non-stop clicking behind your beefcake of the Underlord, when you have an Earth Spirit... He likes to play on the fringes of vision. He likes to maybe hit your roll, like this, there you go, boom, you hit your roll, and that's about it. That's his impact now. And then PL, sure he's gonna have a little bit less damage, and eventually at level two, three, you're gonna get some firestorms in your face, but you bring out extra regen, and it's just a trader farm. Yeah, which uh, Kuman will be more than happy about, so. Let's have a look over towards the middle lane as no one faces up versus a Pikachu on the Puck and Morphling matchup. Who is favoured in this one? Without, <laughs> without look looking at the CS, CS right chart, now, please. That's I've, a bit of a cheat. I'm sorry. I've Cover already looked up. at the CS chart. I would probably, yeah, I would would have said probably the, PL, uh, the Morphling, sorry. I'm thinking of PL still. Yeah, probably the Morphling because of the uh, damage discrepancy. And he can always stay at quite low HP at the early stage of this laning because... Obviously, Puck doesn't really do that much damage at the start. Only doing 70 damage on both Orb and Waning Rift. So yeah, you're going to probably see the Morphling take the early lead. But then when Puck gets Edge. to level 4-5... Solo dropping yeah. quite low. Yeah. Does just manage to get under the tower. Not a huge yeah. amount of kill potential between these two, really. Yeah, he's not really dying bottom, that's for sure. Like, 
even if they dive him, the only time he dies is if he's, I think, an extra 100, 200 units deeper into the lane because he's quite a fast hero being Bambi. And yeah, Bigman just throwing down a rock or two. But yeah, back to this mid lane matchup. I think it's uh, mm -hmm. worth noting as well. I mean, usually Puck likes to play around phase shift in lanes, especially if he's like, for example, uh, Lena, something like that. Someone who's just going to throw out nukes. And Morphling doesn't have. I mean, he's got Adapt to Strike, sure, but he's not going to use that in lane. No. Waveform is almost impossible to dodge. Maybe not yeah, impossible, he... but it's very, very hard. It's just not worth leveling up, and he's probably not going to use it aggressively anyway. So, yeah, Pikachu's kind of got this wasted skill point, which he's going to throw into uh, other spells instead, but it just kind of reduces the hero's effectiveness overall. Yeah, it's the same skill board he done the other day, which was just maxing waveform and then the attribute shift, which was just push out the early levels with right clicks. When you get high enough level in waveform with your bottle, you just you waveform into your opponent whilst pushing out the wave. So, one of the more well known matchups from there, one I think, yeah. Yep, and he's having a flying start to this uh, middle lane, and down at bottom, Kuman doing very well for himself as well. It's uh, pretty high last hits across the board, really. In fact, uh, Puck is actually doing the worst out of everyone as they start to go on to Chappy here, but Bignum going to punch him away. Solo's still chasing. He's got the impetus. Will it be enough? Not quite. No. Surviving on 30 HP. The Underlord will live, but the he pressure is intense. Like 5 XP away from being able to get that kill from level 2 Impetus. Yeah, now it comes out and Chappy runs into lane and immediately, boop, here comes the rainbows and pain. Most obnoxious of fives. And, oh, hold on. Ah, make sure you get the value up. There you go. There we go. I love what this is something which we see uh, some of the... I'm not that? a fan of that firestorm. Yeah. <laughs> that one creep firestorm. It's like, ah. Oh. You can tell this man is desperate. He did not want to mm. come forward any more than this. He's like, well, this is the only creep I'll be seeing for the next minute. Yeah, and this is, like, I think people jump on the, the bandwagon of Underlord VPL being like, oh my god, you got the Underlord VPL, wow, that's crazy! It's like, not really. When you have a good position 5 to enable the Underlord, and subsequently your position 4, who's trying to enable the Underlord, doesn't play well with melee or flaners. Big Nam actually tried for the rotation up to top, the Chen TP'd yeah. him in, and they didn't find anything. They tried to jump Zayats, but uh, didn't get themselves a kill. Looking at Solo, yeah, doesn't have much mana, but again, zero kill potential between these two. Mango, really. mango, what are you saying? He's back to he's back to having mana. Yep. Hey boys. And you got two clarities coming out on the courier as well. But they're, they're, I, Cyber Legacy currently using that Chen TP one to uh, relocate the lanes and two to try and get that kill, like you just said, with the Earth Spirit. The Earth Spirit kill not really uh, becoming anything, and I think it's showing that Cyber Legacy is struggling to find presence on the map right now for this Earth Spirit. He can't gank mid because it's a morphling. You, that move never works. He can't really play bottom with Chappy because this end tranche is doing too much damage. So right now it's a little bit concerning. How can Bignum find a game? Maybe he could hunt for a couple couriers. Maybe he could drag a creep wave or two. But right now I'm not really seeing the impact from this uh, double, double melee offlane. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a hard one, uh, especially for an Earth Spirit who kind of wants to be this roaming hero, but he's just going to have to play statically in lane, which is not where he's very strong, but hopefully he can find some value back in the mid game. But he's going to have to get a lot done. Meanwhile, Chappie gets to interrupt this pull here with Solo. He's trying to get a bit of XP for himself. Again, just lobbing out these spears. This is something we're going to see a lot more out of Enchantress now. Um, not really in that engagement, but earlier on you saw Solo, you know, he's just going for the right clicks mostly whenever they're kind of trading in lane and then only starts using the impetus when they start to run away because the increased mana cost slightly uh, mm -hmm. just makes it a little less value to uh, to just throw them out willy-nilly. So you want to wait until they start running and get the extra range on it. So yeah. You can also see from his positioning when he throws out the Impetus before, you're maybe a little bit more lenient with where you're standing but here he's always making sure he's as far back as possible and yeah, now they're jumping pretty hard onto chappy here solo he's uh throwing in some spears as well not really much of a kill threat but still just laying some damage into the big boy stopping him coming in towards this creep wave here as kuman just racking up deny after deny 41 and 19 and if you feel that was good well let's have a look at no one over here who's on 47 and 5 has been jumping to the jungle a bit as well but i mean they, these guys are just absolutely farming uh, really yeah. starting to feel concerned for uh, for Cyber Legacy. I know it's only a bit of gold, it's only the laning phase, but it's a pretty bad start for them all across the board, really. Yeah, when when you're the team who's drafting the potential counters for a lane, additionally have that earlier kind of overall lineup, having a single core, it is worrying when the opponent who has that dual core lineup, <laughs> which has quite weak laning presence, is the one taking that early lead. If we look at top lane, an important thing to note, this lane has always been within 
kind of this front of the Radiant Tower region. I don't think at any point they've been able to reset the lane. So that's why Mars is sitting on 38 CS. Not only that, it's a Mars and he's a very strong laner, but they haven't actually tried to pull to make it a little bit more difficult where the Earthrit could then maybe TP in and the Mars is a little bit deeper into the lane. So yeah. I think it's the product of this Earthrit not being able to go mid. Additionally, this top lane always boom pushed in. It's really forcing difficulty for Cyber Legacy. Trying to jump here onto Rezo, but Bignum is so far away. He's actually just making the pulls here instead. So He's so tanky. He's got yeah, the headdress buckler, a stick as well, obviously against the PA to get charges from the stifling dagger. But it's, it's game so hard right now for Cyber Legacy. I think they need to wait for VP to overstep their mark or at least wait for a puck rotation. I think a puck coil sets up for a free kill but as you see here Marina resolution comes out yep now as well as pro Ignum. looking for the aggression and pick and roll through on desires but they have brought down happy dura and that was your first blood eight minutes into the game and well they're looking for zayas but i don't think they're going to find them in fact they're going to find nothing here cyber legacy just forced to take the loss and gain absolutely nothing for it and even solo is coming over and just going to lob some spears towards plantamos here and this is the the best thing that vp can do is as the laning phase collapses and pl becomes his own own thing being within bot lane and you can't really gank him as well unless again if the puck comes bottom solo is now freed up to move wherever he wants on the map most most enchanters at this point will move into the enemy jungle start farming here take away at least a camp or two and play around the idea of moving away the focus of the pl right now though solo has kind of wandered into complete death oh has he Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, I was just making it sure that PL grabbed his mango tree uh, down at bottom, which he did, thankfully. But um, yeah, Solo is dead. How did that happen? He, well, he kind of wandered in, placed the ward, as you can see, south of the outpost, but then walked back down into the vision of Dio and just got, got crit from a PA. So, oh. Ow. Yeah. yeah. No, it, wasn't, no, it wasn't really uh, that interesting. Couple... Just yet. Yeah. I was expecting him just to start farming the jungle and then put some pressure there, but no, he just, just died. Just a death. Died of death. Well, Cyber Legacy trying to make something happen down at bottom, rotation. maybe. Yeah, Pikachu coming in. Kuman, is he aware about this? It doesn't look like it, although mm, he's playing pretty far under tower. And yet, oh, this is so, so awkward. Cyber Legacy is just like, well, guess we'll go take this uh, outpost at the very least. Meanwhile, Virtus Pro pushing in, looking to secure at the very least one outpost. Just in time. Yeah, they just should in get time. They're trying to discard. Palatimus is like, please, boys, hit me instead. But actually, with the puck coming over, they might have set themselves out for a pretty nice gank here. Going to finish off Zayats on the back lines. Blantimus will find out. Oh, Bugman rolls in, finishes the job. And meanwhile, Arena comes down. Chen is actually dead here. He might just die to the Arena. Certainly will. Resolution slowed down. Palatimus, Pikachu, and Bignum all giving chase Bounty right room, now. Room. And can he get it? Yes. He does value, but still dead. Resolution, God. Yeah, Doesn't Pikachu. matter if you die there, buddy. You got that value bounty room. <laughs> but still, Pikachu with a good rotation at last, using that first coil and finding themselves a couple of kills to get Cyber Legacy back on the map in this game. So uh, currently sitting at three kills to two. This uh, god awful uh, CS chart and net worth chart should maybe start to look a little bit less awful for Cyber Legacy if they can capitalize upon this. But still, neither of the core heroes are actually dead. The Morphling's still absolutely fine, farming up at mid, the PL doing the exact same thing in the jungle. They're both happy as lambs, just waggling their little tails and farming away and ignoring the world. Yeah, and a really important thing, oh, Mango Tree placed on the top side next to the Radiant Tier 1 tower. The important thing is every move VP's made right now has always been on the die side of the map which means you can't turn that into a quite an early push with the Chen and maybe a couple of right clicks from the Underlord. So, yeah, I think right now VP are in a position where they're able to farm so freely on the map because there's never been any dire group up to go for an objective. And also, especially with the Underlord in bot lane, when we saw him go for the PL, the Underlord already pushed out the lane. So how can you gank a guy underneath his tower, especially when it's a PL at night time? So I think Cyber Legacy trying to do stuff but it's a little bit too late disjointed and the team aren't able to kind of get the lanes in the right positions to set themselves up for these rotations well pressure coming out at top and by pressure i mean they have destroyed the tower already no one just no one's styling up. man let, let let's just be clear here no one has dumpstered the mid lane and is now freely roaming the streets 
Yeah. Meanwhile, Solo does go down again, down in the bottom lane, but we're looking towards Zayats here as he's chasing down Happy. Happy, though, he's going south, but nope, there comes the lift. Resolution trying to find the angle for a spear. Meanwhile, in the back lines, Chappy just fighting up into Zayats, and the uh, side legacy actually able to come around and get the return kill instead. Rezo will just march himself out of that situation. Pikachu still uh, looking to, uh, to shuffle over towards no one, but not really anything he can do. Although an Invis Mars could cause issues for the puck if you can catch him out. Uh, question yeah, time. Is Morphling going to get mm -hmm. his shotgun before PA gets BKB? Answer time. Yes. Of, yes, of yes, course. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the easiest pop quiz I've had to do in 2020 so far. Um, I think the another important thing to know is VP has to respect the fact that Cyber Legacy will want to play as a closer bunch of heroes quicker than Virtus Pro. PL and Morphling naturally are going to want to hit creeps. And as you see from the, the kind of map uh, presence that VP just had with Solo dying in bot, Rubik dying deep in the dire jungle, and now Solo potentially dying bot again to another rotation, is VP are just playing the map quite openly, which does give a couple free kills away to Cyber Legacy. If they can even kill him. Oh, they can't even kill him. Oh, Solo lives. A yeah, rare, rare, one in rare occurrence, but there you go. I uh, just want to point out this absolutely garbage tree placement which got killed off by a uh, resolution. Yeah. It was uh, mm -hmm. right here, right in front of the outpost. Like, it, disgusting. I what? saw it. I really. Yeah, no. All right, moving on. Moving on. <laughs> work, work on it, guys. Work on it, Cyber Legacy. You know, place your trees better. Plant trees. It's agitated me too much. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, where is the other tree? It should. The they, they've got one on PL. Yeah. There you go. Oh, you found it. One. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's a fine one. Tis a fine tree. It's situational. Uh, again, fun fact with mango trees is if you place it on high ground, if you try placing a ward directly on the stump of the tree, it won't allow you. Of course, there's a very large AOE of a hill, so you can very easily get wards up there, but in the rare occasion that you find the exact location, yeah. it will prevent you from placing it. Yeah, and then you know that there might be a tree there. Get yeah. your quelling blades out. Well, don't place your ward so that you uh, don't give it away on the enemy. Be smart. Uh, a very slow game, which is definitely favoring Verdus Pro. I mean, you know, they're, they're, they're the team with the Morphling and the PL, and they're going to be hitting their timings at an absolutely fine time. But PL even felt the freedom to go for the Yasha over the Diffusal. Mm -hmm. Farming which, efficiency. Yeah, and a game like this shouldn't be allowed. It really shouldn't. Like, he should be the one having to go for the Diffusal, fight mm -hmm. up whilst the Morphling works towards his, uh, his shotgun build, and then they kind of take over and swap places, but neither of them need to. They can both be as greedy as they like here and just farm up because there's very little action coming out from Cyber Legacy so far. Yeah, it's all about being able to close off the map, and right now, VP are the ones making moves that Cyber Legacy should have made. Oh, oh and the miss coil. no, Pikachu missing the dream coil. Kumin just easily gets away with Doppelganger there, dodging out a three-hero rotation. Meanwhile, Happy might not Everybody be feeling the know. same way. Another arena, another kill from Resolution. He's just bullying Happy. He's not dead yet, and the roll-in hand of God as well. So get the turnaround kill to Zayats, okay? Never mind. Happy's gonna live, and now Resolution looking in some trouble as Plant's most big number, Pikachu will trying to chase him down he's trying to make his way over to the river but i don't think anything's gonna save him here resolution will be dying and pikachu gets himself another kill here so cyber legacy at the very least able to punish but still i have to reiterate it's not those big heroes going down in fact they haven't even noticed any of this going on it's kuman and no one just farming up the jungle just completely unaware so their team is doing so much work on the side of virtus pro there's the three of them moving around even if they do die like this like it's, it's actually almost okay because cyber legacy are not getting anything for it and they're not interrupting the farming speed of no one or or of uh kuman yeah it just doesn't become uh, an objective base base push after the uh, engagement so you see here no one just comes mid and instantly they disengage from this mid tower i think resolution going on to the chen there i don't think he looked at the inventory because of course chen does have the mech and of course it's ult so unless you uh, kill him within the spear he will always be able to heal up so that initial like oh no chen's dead as soon as you kind of click on his inventory and you see the mech you're like ah this man's debating you quite hard here sir 
Yeah, yeah, he does have it out. And a nice coil coming down onto two. Definitely going to result in the uh, death of Zayat as the stone comes rolling through from Bigna. But me, one of the back lines, resolution, looking for the counter initiation onto the channel. And with Kumin here, Kumin is turning up and doing the damage. They will drop 10. Meanwhile, Chappie just trying to run himself away. A nice pit of mana is going to hold back four. But now, Kumin jumping forwards with no one. They close the gap. They drop the arena. And goodbye, Mr. Chappie. They grab themselves an Underlord kill. Virtus Pro strike back. And they strike hard and grab themselves three kills. That was such a filthy timing coming up from Virtus Pro. Both the E-Blade and the Diffuser was purchased from the PL, which instantly led to aggression. And syncing that up, yeah, instantly leads to a couple kills and this tier, uh, tier 2 tower. Yeah, this is a really, really strong peak for Virtus Pro and this mm. PA. Well, she has found her Battle Fury, you know, it's, it's a good enough timing, but, well, not good enough for this game, actually. And now the shotgun comes out. PA needs to jump herself away here. And no one is naturally able to follow up with the adaptive strike or just didn't really feel the need to, I guess. He's just like, eh, whatever. She's scared away. That's all I want from life. Yeah, he wants to reserve his mana. I think he'd go for it if he knew it was a kill. But Could after the been. initial waveform, he's like, eh, I'm not really killing her. Could have been mana he did. It does say he used it, but it's hard to tell when he's got the ethereal buff on him because mm -hmm. we can't really see it. So I wasn't checking the debuffs at the time, but could have possibly gone away with Blur. Hard to say. Mm -hmm. Either way, uh, it wasn't a kill, and it was probably never going to be. I don't, I don't think he had the damage by himself, but just no, uh, no, no. flexing on the PA, getting herself, getting yeah. her out of there. Shoot, shoot. This is my lane. Go. Exactly. Basically, I'm what farming he's, uh... here. You are not farming hero, though. Now, with all the heroes <laughs> I'm coming here in, again. yeah, Pants most starting to push down this tower. I mean, he's very, very slightly trying to come back into this game and overtake no one and Kuman, but he's still a long way off, about 700 gold away. No, actually, 1,000 gold away from Kuman and 1,200 gold away from no one. And yeah, this is a single core lineup versus a, a dual core lineup. But when you're looking at late game anyway, Pikachu, he's actually going for the Desolator as well. As, so they, hit, that's interesting. as they hit Roshan, though, Roshan's about to fall. I think if we have a quick glance over to net worth, we have to give... Some props to Solo right now. Look at him, 5k net worth compared to the, the 3k on his Rubik. Like, Solo is just being greedy, just always farming up. Normally, you want you you don't see Solo hitting as many creeps, but slapping him the Enchantress, he's gonna nab a creep wave or two when he can. That's pretty insane as well. A free Roshan, not contested at all by Cyber Legacy. They were trying to be sneaky, do stuff at bottom, push some towers, and Virtus Pro just took full advantage of that fact. I'm really Smoking surprised about Pox build. Okay. Pucks build. Sadly, so smoke. Okay, let's look at the Pucks build. Yeah, he's going for the Desert, so he's trying to at least provide some enabling damage for his uh, PA. But again, the issue is his PA also is obviously needs to buy Desert. So, yeah, no, not not a nice looking build right now. No, not, not at all. And the I really feel Deso. like you kind of want to go for magic damage, especially if you're against the PL, and if you're against the Morphling. You know, these guys can be bursted. I've Surely yep. you want you want to have that early damage to be able to stand a chance mm -hmm. of doing that. Otherwise, you're basically putting yourself in a position where you're relying entirely on right click damage versus two agi cores and a Mars, might I add, who has bulwarks. So I don't we know about this one, Chief. It was about the they have a nice amount of magic and physical damage coming out from their draft, and they're now itemizing to all in, like you said, into that physical kind of department. Which yeah, I'm not a fan of this for sure. This. this Double, double death. So I think double of any item is just a ludicrous idea. <laughs> Simply ludicrous. Mm. I tip my hat. Uh. PA day, going on sir. an adventure. We down to the bottom lane to join Happy Dirara. BKB next it's up. Got a sound effect us. on a Chen TV. Yeah, the existing one's pretty underwhelming, so I felt like I needed mm. to. Okay, uh, no, that's fine. Know, no, no, there is room for. We haven't had any announcer packs or sound packs, so I'm sure there's a room in the market for a, a Nomad one. Yeah, maybe may, maybe there is. Hmm, we'll see. I mean, look, look big in the game, man. Like, level 9, just chilling, like, double bracer. Normally, at this stage of the game, you might have a Veil or... Oh, it doesn't even get the courier. Oh, Bignum feels the, feels the pressure. Yeah, Bignum, not a big man this game. He is he is a little little boy. He's a little toddler mm -hmm. running around amongst the adults. Just wanting to slap him down the moment he gets too full of himself. <laughs> little them. Little them for this game. 
Oh man, Virtus Pro taking another tier two, doing what they want. <laughs> Meanwhile, Chappy oh, going for dying. a ride out, and he is gonna make it. See you later. Ooh, that's Ooh, he stole it. Is he, oh, going excellent. up to top. Hello, resolution. You ordered a taxi. And push. Hi. Delightful. That is so delightful. Yeah, that's pleasant. And the tower's already gone. My God, this pushing power is berserk. And Chappy, oh, Chappy. It's just oh, removed no. from existence. The Venn oh. diagram of death coming through and just annihilating this poor underlord. He's had to buy back into this one but the racks are already gone. I mean, there's, there's not even many kills in this game. It's just net worth. It's just money. It's just Virtus Pro playing their timings and Cyber Legacy scratching their bums, sitting in their base and wondering what the hell they're going to do about this. The coil comes out. It's not bad. Arena in response. They're trying to get in. Palatimos is on the front lines. They're doing decent damage, but Bignum's the first one to drop. And Solo might be heading down here. Can they finish the job? They can, but Chappy dying in response and has no buyback. Virtus Pro are just not even phased by this. They might have lost Solo, but they don't really care. Turning onto Bignum, tearing him apart, but he's going to get the Roll away, Plantamos trying to fight up on the front lines onto Kuma, but a beautiful spear, pitting him to the tier fours. Can they get the damage down onto him? Doesn't seem like they can. A nice jump away, gonna get him to relative safety, but no, they'll finish the job. Zarts will get him with the favor, with the lift, and the GG well played is called cool. just like that. This little sheep here kind of epitomizes this game for Cyber Legacy. They look sad and they look dead. Game number one goes away, a Virtus Pro inside 22 minutes with a morphling PR lineup, which just was not even tough. Touched, completely untouched, unburdened, unfussed. A very clean victory from Virtus Pro here. Yeah, extremely clean. And I think wrapping up on the whole itemization at the end from the Puck and PA, it was a Puck went for the Deso, PA then completed the BKB, and then obviously using the phase shift attack from the Puck on the Deso would then try and give the PA a way to have sustain and damage through her, his Puck. So it was like a Hail Mary itemization, I believe to mm -hmm. at least bridge the issues that they had overall though we have to, i think the biggest highlight from this game is simply vp's ability just to identify when a weak mid lane is to occur and then this snap morphling pick the same style of secret where they would first phase it and just put niche on it and off we go we don't care we play it mid vp has the ability just to we see a really good morphling game we pick it, we slap it mid, we do not care about the rest of our heroes. Because yeah. we know the way that no one plays this mid morphing, it's far more orientated. You can never pressure the mid tap. There's not a creep wave. You can never really rotate onto the morphling because it's a morphling. So right now, I think the biggest concern from Cyber Legacy is we have to realize that if we... I, I like their draft overall. It has this ability to death ball, to have explosive damage from varying types. But the overall issue is simply you can't get to the stage of your draft where... VP can pick a Morphling that you cannot rotate on at all, and you cannot pressure a PL because you have Underlord Earth Spirit. So I think VP's draft just was, as even though it looked greedy, when you break down each element, it was so crisp and so, yeah, so impactful. Yeah, very impactful. I mean, it looked really, really nice from Virtus Pro and uh, defying, you know, the slow expectations, but taking a very quick win. And that's going to be game one goes Virtus Pro, but game two, you know, still in the pipeline here. It was a bit of an outdraft, a bit of an outplay, uh, a bit of a wipe across the board. Cyber Legacy, it's on them now to pick themselves up, recover and get ready for game number two and try and take a victory or at the very least push it to a game three against Virtus Pro here at the Paramatch League season two. My name is Nomad. He's been T-Governor and we'll see you very shortly for game number two of Virtus Pro versus Cyber Legacy.